Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final NASCAR.com Garage Cam of 2014, live at Homestead Miami Speedway. I'm your host, Matthew Dillner, bringing you all the fun as we take you for an all-access hot pass into the NASCAR garage, a view that, uh, well, you, you need a hot pass to see, but we give you kind of all access. We go inside the garage. We try to talk to the drivers, the crew members, the personalities that make this garage tick. So behind the scenes, live, raw, uncut, you just never know what you're going to see here, including SJ Golombeski, who will leave him alone because he has one heck of a sunburn. Oh, my Lord, if you could only see it right now. But uh, we have some fun, so make sure if you're looking at this video screen here and you're watching this show live, look to the right of the video screen. You see that chat room. Don't just watch it. Get in there. Be a part of this community because it's a community all to its own. So we have a lot of fun here on NASCAR.com Garage Cam as a family here. NASCAR is a family. And, well, we're going to start out the show at this side of the garage. Let's start it out with the first live Spring Cup Garage Cam for me and my son, says Robert Vanderberg. That's awesome usually end up watching the replay. So the first time you and your son are watching it live, and, and hey, look who's here right now. Let's grab this mic real quick because Slugger Labby is here, and, and uh, tell, tell me what you got going on this morning. We just uh, got another car here with Brian Scott that we're racing this week and try to give him some more laps and uh, help him prepare for next season a little bit. So just uh, grabbed a couple guys from the shop along with Mike Hillman's group and came to race in the sunny Florida. So, so what's, uh, what's up with you next year? Because I heard you're moving into maybe a different role with R&D and whatnot, well, or what's the deal? We're going to slow down a little bit. You know, uh, I've been racing for 28 years in NASCAR. I give a lot of my life to the sport, and it's just time to slow down a little bit. So uh, a reduced pace next year is the best way to say it. You better still be in the garage some, because if not, we'll miss you, and we'll come kick your butt. Well, don't kick my butt, but I'll be around probably 14 to 16 races, and that's probably enough for me. All right, Slugger. Thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. You too. Happy holidays. The number 33 car right here. Brian Scott pulling double duty this weekend. So, talented race car driver driving in the Nationwide Series. And you know what I love right here? Check it out. What old school wood. Slugger Labby, uh, quite a racing pedigree for Slugger Labby, ranging from the NASCAR Modifieds and Northeast Racing all the way down here. And quite, quite a smart man right there. And here's a rookie competitor right here, the number 66, Brett Moffitt, making another start in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. This year is all about getting his feet wet. And uh, he's done an impressive job of keeping that car out of trouble every time he's been behind the wheel. Another guy pulling double duty. Good to see him in a cup car this weekend. Blake Cook, the number 32. The revolving door of drivers pretty much there. Phil Parsons, Racing98.com. Their website on the side of the number 98, the Phil Parsons group right here. Driver Josh Wise. We saw Matt Benedetto in Nationwide Garage Cam wearing a Josh Wise t-shirt. He's a fan. Okay, Ryan Dunn. Ryan Dunn, I would like to thank Garage Cam for being a tool that I can use to get closer to my favorite sport. Thank you, Garage Cam. Well, thank you, Ryan, for watching this show. We do it for you here on escrow.com, and it's a different brand of different, as I like to say. Is, uh, we just like to have fun here and, and give you a view that you can't see on any of the other TV shows and truly do something that's unique and behind the scenes as we look at Alex Bowman's car. If you didn't see Alex Bowman's fire suit last week, it was quite frankly one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It was a tuxedo fire suit with the Dumb and Dumber sponsorship. This weekend, he is dipped. So the dipyourcar.com rod. Got the big giant tomato on Reed Sorensen's car this week. T for Telly. Tomatoes, I've used those tomatoes in making sauce. I will most likely be using them this year making sauce because I like to make Italian food in the winter time. Slow cook sauce all day. Anyway, I'm going to get myself hungry here. But hey, here's uh, Cole Witz, number 26 speed stick car. A lot of people will be using speed stick this weekend. A little bit of hot, steamy conditions here in Homestead, but it's beautiful weather. And there's uh, Matt Stricker, Nick Duncan, two of our producers that work really hard here on NASCAR.com, behind the scenes. This show is about behind the scenes, and heck, we're behind the scenes too, so give my boys a shout out for all the hard work this year, 2014. This is a long, grueling season to be a part of. Michael Annette, the pilot truck stops machine. And you know, this seven car brings us over 
to our Mobile One Auto Tech question. And this guy right here is a tire, tire specialist, Nate McGuire. And Nate, we wanted to ask you a question about, uh, you know, we saw Jeff Gordon get into some contact with Fred Keselowski. We see it all the time where cars make side-by-side -side contact and it slices the valve stem. Can you show the race fans what happens there and why? Sure I can, Matt, no problem. Basically, you only have about this much space between the rim and the, and the valve stem. And there's the so, valve stem right there, it's metal. Yeah. Yes, sir. So when the cars touch each other, the two tires rub together and they rub so hard that they actually cut the valve stem. Even though it's made out of metal, not rubber like your standard car tire. So it's just, it is only being held on there by, you know, a good 16th of an inch worth of resin. And what people don't realize is these tires are going around so fast that if they hit another tire or some metal on the side of the car, it's, it slices it. Yes, sir. It's just, it's, everything's happening so quickly, it just unfortunately happens during the race and the tire gets cut down and then they'll, that's why they, they use the inner liners at the big tracks to try to uh, limp the car around a pit road and get it changed and off away you go again. And that's a nightmare for a tire guy, huh? It's terrible. You don't sleep at night very often when that happens. All right, Dave McGuire, thanks for being part of the Mobile One Auto Thank Tech you, Question of the Week. We appreciate it. And I'll tell you what, that right there is something that nobody on any team wants to see happen. Oh, we love doing our Mobile One Auto Tech Question of the Week, and we want to give a big special shout out to Mobile One for being a sponsor of NASCAR.com Garage Cam all year long. So everybody out there, support them, because they support us and they support your show. Hey, a big thanks to the 51 Bunch here, because you want to talk about behind the scenes. Well, between the two Garage Cam shows, we had about 25 minutes, and our producer, Matt Strickert, went running to try to plug in and this crew right here helps us out with this generator, turning it on so we can plug in. And here is Justin Allgaier in uh, last week of, of your rookie season here. Could, could you grade your rookie season of, of A, performance, but B, how much fun you've had with this opportunity? Well, I've had a lot of fun. You know, these guys at Scott Motorsports have done a great job this year. We've had a good time and, and we've grown as an organization tremendously. Uh, don't get me wrong, I still would love to be up there contending for wins, obviously going for this championship. But, you know, we've, uh, we feel like we've, we've made huge gains. And as far as performance goes, you know, like I said, we always want to be better. Uh, I feel like I'd give it a C. Could always be better, but not a failing grade either. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited here at Homestead, last one. I got to go to my last rookie meeting a few minutes ago, so that was cool. And then I get to have uh, all different types of country flags and... Yeah, I've got uh, what's going got on here. Kinds of stuff. So this is this is the Brandt International car. So basically, what we're doing is we're representing all the different countries that Brandt sells products in, and helping agriculture grow in all those countries. And so uh, definitely a lot of fun this weekend. Well, Brandt helps out so many people, but they also the Brandt team helped us out today, firing up a generator so we can charge for Garage Game. You guys have a really strong, tight knit group here. How much fun has the camaraderie been with this race team this year? Like I said a minute ago, we have a great team here at Ace Scott Motorsports. These guys, being a part of this group this year, a lot of, uh, a lot of variation between people. We have a lot, I guess some guys have a lot of experience, been around the garage for a long time. Some guys are fairly new to the garage. So to have all of that and to, to really see the growth of everybody and uh, just to see how everybody, you know, mixes together, it's been a lot of fun. And myself as well, you know, learning these guys from Daytona until now. We, you know, we always talk about NASCAR family and the brand family, but you know, this sport really is about family and we're we're gone so much and we're around these guys so often that you know to, to be able to have that that camaraderie between the, the group here is a lot of fun. Well thanks for being part of the Garage Cam family. We appreciate you being on all the time. Justin Allgaier right there, the number 51 and a pretty cool deal right above that splitter there with Brandt International. Neat to see. All the different paint schemes this year, we like to give you a look at them. Of course, Danica Patrick with the Florida Lottery paint scheme. Always colorful paint scheme here in Miami for Miss Danica Patrick. As we look at our interactive chat room here right now, we look at Matthew Maddox. Gonna miss you, Garage Cam. See you next year. So many people chiming in. It's great to, to see all the fans chiming in on the board. And thank you so much from all of us here, not just me, from all of us here at NASCAR.com for all your kind words. 
Ricky Stenhouse, fast in all colors. Pretty cool looking scheme right now for Ricky Stenhouse in this number 17 machine. Fast and all, been such an integral part of Roush racing throughout all the different platforms when you look at the NASCAR Nationwide Series and you look at the Sprint Cup Series. And of course, you gotta get used to this because this will be the sponsor on this number 17 car, Ricky Stenhouse next year. Roush getting a fresh look next year, okay, with Carl Edwards moving on and of course, Trevor Bain moving up from the NASCAR Nationwide Series, a youth movement going on in the Roush stables. Oh, we have tire fans always on NASCAR.com. Here's your tires for you as we take a stroll through the garage right now to the other side. I think we're going the right way. Yeah, we are going the right way. I got turned around for a minute. Thought we were in the NASCAR Nationwide Series garage again. We just got done with NASCAR Nationwide Series garage cam. We put forth a Twitter question earlier. We'll try to see if we can pick the best answer for you on my Sprint phone. Dip your car also on board the JJ Yaley machine. Michael McDowell, the number 95, Levine family racing entry. And uh, yeah, a lot of sponsors on board this car this weekend because they are actually thanking all the sponsors that they had for this season. Thrivent Financial, one of them. I know uh, Kayla, Positive Encouraging on the side of the car and on the uniforms right there. One of my favorite radio stations, by the way. And then there's McDizzle right now watching some practice. He's got his fan view, what are, with fan vision, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm just trying to get a little signal. You know, inside the garage, it's hard to get a signal, so get my fan vision all dialed in. Got one uh, one final weekend here, so looking forward to it. One so. final weekend, you guys are, I, I heard, thanking a lot of your sponsors this weekend by having a bunch of them on the car. Yeah, it's just our way of you know, saying thank you to all our sponsors. we got Caleb and Thrivent, E6 and TWD. Anyone that's been on our car this year is uh, on the car this weekend. So really thankful. It's been a fun year and something to build on for next year. So what are you doing in the off season? That's a magic question. It's the last day of school. Yeah, I got, I got three kids, so I'll be staying at home and hanging out and enjoying some uh, peaceful, quiet time. All right, Michael McDowell, thanks for joining us on NASCAR.com Garage Cam. Trevor Bain, we just talked about him making the move to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Of course, that will be in a Roush car, so the final race for Trevor Bain with the Wood Brothers group. The historic number 21 machine that has taken so many of NASCAR's greatest drivers and so many of the greats in, in just motorsports in general to victory lane. I don't think there's any cars on this side of the garage, but there's a bunch of people using the shade right here. This is a shady spot right here. And we got a lot of action coming up, so these guys want some shade. Here's Brian Vicker's car right here in the Paul Menard, number 27, right next door, giving you a look at that sleek-looking Chevrolet SS. And we'll roll on over here out into the bright sunshine and see, we, we like to show you every single car we can. So we're gonna motor on over here. CJ and everybody in tow. Halfway, halfway in garage cam. No halfway symbol from Matt Stricker. That's okay. <laughs> He's got his hands full. Here's the number 13 group. Casey Mears to number 13 Geico car. And there is Casey ducking inside of his car right now on the left side there you saw him. Hard working group here, the Geico crew switching to Chevrolet this year and uh, what a benefit it has been for them, they said, to switch to Chevrolet because th this team has gotten a lot of support from the Chevrolet group. As far as manufacturer's uh, title goes, man, just think about it. You, you know, the three makes here, Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota, we were thinking about it before the show. Either one of them can win a championship. If Toyota wins it, it'll be their first. So a big year for Toyota if they can pull off a championship. Chevrolet has been so dominant. Martin Truex Jr. ran really strong last week in Phoenix. Would like to end this year on a positive note with this Mayetta, New Jersey driver. Looking at the tablet here, it's hard to read in the sun, but uh, this isn't a real good buy. We still have victory lap from, uh, from Las Vegas, December 4th. Yes, make sure you tune into one of the coolest shows of the year because 
we, we talk to some drivers, we hop in a, a big moving vehicle and we watch all the burnouts. And, and it's such a really cool bird's eye view of the victory lap, which goes through the streets of Las Vegas with these NASCAR Sprint Cup Series stock cars. And, and I'm blessed to be able to host that and uh, also have uh, Alan Cavana uh, from NASCAR.com along uh, side. So a lot of fun with our gang out there in Las Vegas for the banquet. Champions Week, Alan Lane by Marcos. It's been fun watching you. Yes, it is a kind of a sad day for some people here in the garage because sad weekend that is because Marcos Ambrose is moving on and uh, this will be his final weekend competing here in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series and so much that he's done in this sport since he's been here. Uh, you know, the personality though is something that we're always going to remember. Everybody remembers statistics. Yeah, you know, statistics are, are statistics, but it's the people factor that matters and uh, been able to be a part of some really cool events with Marcos Ambrose over the years. He actually came to our uh, motor racing outreach uh, uh, charity race up at Black Rock Speedway, now Yates County Speedway in upstate New York to, uh, to his big win at Watkins Glen and, and how much fun he has when he's around the racetrack and around the local community with his family. So uh, Marcus Ambrose, a really nice guy, a fiery competitor, but a gentleman. So uh, Marcus Ambrose is our salute to you. Uh, let's pass by those garages again. Not many drivers are surfacing yet. Well, there's a reason. That other side of the garage, you'll see more because of the shade. <laughs> this side here, a little empty right now. But you want to talk about a pretty good season. I mean, it's not one of those banner years for Austin Dillon. No race wins. But I'll tell you what, performance has been there, especially in the second half of the year when you're repeating racetracks and the consistency, the amount of laps completed, more laps than anybody else in Cup. This number three team is the driver and the team that has done that this year, and it's a stat that people just don't look at. But for a rookie, laps completed, seat time is as important as anything. Clint Boyer, the 5 iron Energy, number 15. And check it out. It's the Cessna colors for Jamie McMurray, who apparently is eating something. And there is Jamie Mack. Jamie Mack <laughs> eating. A, don't laugh. There was nothing to see. Um, all right. <laughs> last garage cam of, of the uh, year. And it's kind of like, isn't it like the last day of school kind of uh, homestead weekend? Because everybody's pretty usually in a pretty chipper fun mood. and, and Signing each other's yearbooks, you know, that sort of thing? I haven't seen any yearbooks, but it's, uh, <laughs> it is like the last day of school because most people come down a little early and go fishing or just enjoy the weather. And with the exception of probably the four guys racing for the championship, I think the, the mood in the garage is pretty relaxed and laid back, and um, everybody's just ready for a break. Okay, as a veteran of this series, you, this year you've had a rookie teammate. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all know he's had a really good year on the yep. track, but I want to know from you. How would you grade the Lar stash? Oh, man. So, creepy would be the first <laughs> word that comes to mind. I really like the idea of raising awareness for men's health. Why aren't you doing it then? Because my wife won't let me to start with. Um, Mine's about to leave me. I think that mustaches should be illegal. I think that it really? should, if you're going to do it, it should be like a full goatee or a full beard. Okay. Because... Kyle, I'll tell you who Kyle looks like. He looks like Chewy from the Chelsea Handler show. If you really look at him, it's fairly creepy. All right, all right. So what would you grade it letter-wise real quick? Oh, it's a, a letter? Yeah. It's an A, I think. It is an A. I was shocked, first off, that Kyle could grow any hair on his lip. <laughs> I was blown away that he had that ability because he looks so young, but no, it's, it's good. Good for him to do that. All right, we'll thanks a lot, Jamie. Thanks for joining us this year on the show. Always, we appreciate it very much. You got a hard-working crew here, even when they're eating potato chips and lunch, calling you out. <laughs> 10 minutes to go here, and hey, there's the teammate right there, Kyle Larson, the number 42. Salute to all the boys in this number one team for always being so kind to us here in the garage area with NASCAR.com. Some of those guys uh, always volunteering and wanting to answer some of the Mobile One Auto tech questions that we have each week, so really cool to see. We'll have to keep an eye out. We'll have to have our producer, Matthew Strickert, 
Wh where is he? There he is. Uh, keep an eye out for the Lar stash. If you see the Lar stash, let us know. Oh, whoa, whoa, here we go. Okay. Here is Kyle Larson. His last weekend as a rookie in the NASCAR garage. And I'll tell you what, all the talk this morning on both garage cams has been what I've deemed the Lar stash. Uh, Jamie McMurray gave you an A. How would you grade yourself and uh, uh, on, on on the progress and the, the the absolute wonderment that is your mustache? I don't really care if it looks good or bad. I just want to get a win and get a picture of Victory Lane with his stash. So, <laughs> Hope said uh, we have three good shots. I think it's my favorite track. You run right up by the wall. So maybe we can get a Victory Lane in it or this weekend with the stash. Okay, so I know you want to win so bad here. You you think that's going to be the secret? The uh, the, the secret ingredient that'll get it done because you guys have been so close and this team has really performed well. Yeah, I hope so. I think a lot of uh, a lot of good drivers gotten their first wins with mustaches, so I think it'd be nice to uh, to add my name and picture to that list. I love it, Kyle Larson. Have a good day, man. Having some fun in his rookie season, and why not? Because the 42 has been so fast this year, and they've had a lot of fun on the racetrack and off. The crew, some camaraderie right there, and having a good time is that target driver. And uh, Jamie McMurray uh, having a good time with that mustache, too. <laughs> is, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's quite entertaining. Here's Eric Amarola, Smithfield, number 43. And we do have to promote ourselves here because make sure you tune in to From the Road later this weekend. I think it's uh, tomorrow maybe it, it airs, or, or today, actually, maybe. Uh, we went to a Cuban restaurant. Remember, Eric Amarola in the playoffs this year, in the chase, is the only Cuban-American racer that we have here in NASCAR. So make sure you check that piece out. And there is Casey Kane's number five car, Megan Whiteside, PR extraordinaire. We still got a little bit more garage to cover here. I don't know if we're going to get to everybody because my producer is telling me we only have a few minutes left. But uh, Wendy Lake, Matt, please stop talking about how warm it is there. The rest of us are freezing our tailgates off. Well, we did get some pictures on Twitter of snow, which is quite interesting. So a lot of people watching Garage Cam right now with some cold weather. Well, hopefully you, uh, we keep you warm here on NASCAR.com Garage Cam. Denny Hamlin, you see the media right here, because this is the story of Homestead right now. And it is the four drivers, the championship four, that are going here for the Sprint Cup title. One race, There's, they're all the slates wiped clean. Whoever finishes ahead of the other person wins. If you win the race, you win the championship. Denny Hamlin, one of four, one win on the season. Two wins here at Homestead. Probably the best driver performance of the, the four here at Homestead with wins in 2009 and 2013. Joey Logano has yet to have a win here in Cup at, uh, at uh, Homestead. But the season, wow, what a season they've had in this Pennzoil team. Five wins for this Penske group, six by his teammate, 11 races. That's the math. Joey Logano enjoying one heck of a season. A lot of pressure here in the garage, and you can feel it as soon as you walk into this part of the garage area. A guy with no wins on the season, but nothing to lose. The underdogs of this chase and this final race. They say it's a final round. I say it's a final race. One race isn't a round, but you know what? It's going to be epic. Ryan Newman strapping into the Caterpillar number 31. Adam Wasdor. Tell Ryan Newman that I'm picking him to win the championship. Ryan Newman shocked us all at the beginning of the year when he said, you can win this uh, championship without winning a race. He has a possibility of doing that, although he's going out there for a checkered flag. All loaded for Bear. Kevin Harvick, the big win at Phoenix. When the pressure was on, they performed. Can the number four do it again and step it up? Hard-working crew here led by Rodney Childers and a very fast rocket ship here. The Budweiser number four out of the Stuart Haas stables going for that championship. Oh, man, the drama. Brad Keselowski, the number two. Jeff Gordon. Right next door to each other, buddies. <laughs> Looking at the sprint tablet, Renee Garces wanted to see Jeff Gordon, Brad Keselowski, my home state Virginia boy, Denny Hamlin. Let's see if we can show you all these cars here. Mary, Rowdy Lister, 
Number 18 M&Ms, please, Matt. And there is Kyle Busch at the back of the car. We will show you your favorite driver. Getting ready for the first practice session of Ford Championship Weekend here at Homestead Miami Speedway. And here is Carl Edwards. And there's Nigel taking some photographs here of Carl in his car as he gets ready for practice to begin. Give you a good look at Carl putting the steering wheel on there at the number 99 as they get ready for their final ride together as a team. Some close-knit relationships over here on this number 99 bunch, so it will be a great weekend for them, indeed. Right next door, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's not here yet. The crew's looking for him. Dale Earnhardt Jr. with quite a season here. Four wins for the man from Mooresville, North Carolina. A really strong season for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And here is Dale Earnhardt Jr. making his way. You see all the, the fans, the flocks of fans, wanting an autograph of Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he walks towards us on camera. Mike Davis clearing the way here. Mike Davis throwing some elbows, having some fun, and here is Dale Earnhardt Jr. signing some autographs before we get busy for practice. Jr., what a fun season so far, hasn't it been? Yeah, it's been a lot of, a lot of fun. Thank you. And this last race, you try to get everything you can out of your system so you ain't sitting there in the off-season uh, twiddling your thumbs and ready to go back to the track. Um, so much camaraderie here with this group. So how much is it just going to be a fun weekend, laid-back weekend for you guys just all to enjoy it? Yeah, it's Steve's last run, so we're just trying to make sure we've got good speed, make his make his last run as stress-free as possible. I think we've raced good in the race, uh, get through qualifying, try, we just kind of struggle with qualifying, so if we had a good day in qualifying, that would be a great bonus for him. All right, by the way, you're the Movember leader, I think, besides Larson. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. with the killer beard. Not as good as Chuck Bush's beard, but, hey, we like it anyway. Okay, let's look at the, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, look at that. We're looking at our chat room right now, trying to give you some shout outs. We got some people to show you over here. Greg Biffle, the number 48 right here of Jimmy Johnson, of course. The guy that won the title here last year, Jimmy Johnson, the number 41 of Kurt Busch. Let's bring you back over real quick before we have to get out and get back to business here and let the TV crews take over. Oh, what a championship weekend this is gonna be. We've talked to a bunch of the drivers right here. The top four, you could tell the pressure is mounting because all four of those drivers, are strapped into their cars early. Why? They want to get in that car where it's comfortable, where there's no outside interference, where they could just put the helmet on, get inside their own head, and go out there and practice. Because remember, there's a lot of hoopla in this garage right now. But what they're doing is going out on, these, uh, uh, on this track. And this is practice. This isn't the competition. This isn't the race. So they have a lot of things to work on to get these cars tuned in. Folks, this is the NASCAR chase for the Spring Cup. I'm your host, Matthew Dillner. This is Garage Cam. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And until next time, we'll see you at the races.